We're going to start the morning with our Fiona Phillips in her first TV interview since recovering from coronavirus. Fiona is also backing an appeal to help those affected by dementia during this pandemic. It is so good to see you. Really good to see you looking so well because I know it was a little while ago, but you were hit really bad by the virus, weren't you? Well, I was in bed for three weeks. Oh, sort of geez. covered. Yeah, and it all started off with really bad gut pains, which a lot of people have been experiencing, but isn't much talked about. And I just thought I had something wrong with my sort of whole alimentary system, you know, and I just felt sort of full up to there. Then I had sore throat, all the symptoms that you have when an infection is about to invade your body. So... Yeah, but I'm still here. You are indeed. Thank goodness for that, I'll tell you. Um, but, you you know, it was it's such a horrible, horrible thing to have to go through anyway. And then you got a bit of stick from people because this is where, this is where, I, this is where social media baffles me, Fiona. Well, they wasted their time because as soon as they started flooding in... <laughs> Um, I just switched it all off, to be honest with you. I don't, I'm not a big social media sort of user anyway. Um, so, yeah, it, it didn't affect me. I don't know these people. I feel quite sorry for them. If they haven't got anything better to do than to insult someone who's ill, <laughs> what is their problem? Exactly. That's the best possible attitude. I mute them so that they're ranting in an empty room and I don't see it anymore. <laughs> and that's the best idea, the best idea. Now, look, one side effect of this pandemic, unfortunately, a lot of charities are busier than ever before because they're getting people needing help. But at the same time, they're not getting the same source of income because people aren't, of course, able to fundraise and they're not getting as many donations. And this is very much the case with, with the Alzheimer's Society, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Alzheimer's Society, well, people with Alzheimer's and dementia have been hit really, really hard by this. I mean, most of the people in care homes are there because they have dementia and we know how badly the care homes suffer. They suffered a huge number of deaths. Really, really tragic. So... Yeah, the Alzheimer's Society desperately, it, well, it's an emergency appeal, actually. That's what they're calling it, because they desperately need more funds in the wake of this pandemic, because so many people need them. And if you think about it, in care homes, the, the deaths were, were horrific, because there was no PPE, you know, they had no protection at all. Staff had no protection, the people in there had no protection. It's no wonder they died in their hundreds, thousands. So, yeah, I mean, dementia's a terrible, terrible illness. Uh, both of my parents had it, you know, really quite early on in their lives and it just devastated our whole family. And I don't think I've actually still got over it. Uh, I, I can understand that. I can completely understand yeah. that. It's a, it's such a, a hellish thing to deal with. I mean, I, I remember at the time. I, I thought you were. You just had that. <laughs> no, but you were you were amazing because you you got on. You came in. You did your job. You know, you're a mother of two, um, and and also looking after parents who bit by bit, day by day, were, you know, losing. You were losing them, losing them slowly, slowly. It really, absolutely heartbreaking to go through. Need all the help they can get, don't they? Yeah, they absolutely do. And what people don't realise as well is when people have Alzheimer's, they actually impact on other emergency services in a big way, actually. I mean, I've never really had much contact with the police, apart from when I shoplifted when I was 11. But um, uh, uh, during my parents' what, years with Alzheimer's, we had the fire brigade round, ambulance, police. I remember one day after coming off GMTV, Lorraine, I think, I can't remember who I'd interviewed, but it, I think it was Clint Eastwood came in. And um, I got outside and had a phone from, you know, Wales, where my parents were, saying, oh, but just to t let you know, your parents have set the house on fire. You know, so, you know, so it was a bizarre existence, and it went on for a long, long time. I, I was constantly whizzing up and down the M4 to Wales to, to see... I do. I, re I remember it well. I remember it very, very well indeed. And it's interesting that you say that you, you haven't quite got over it. And I, don't, I think something like that you don't actually get over it anyway. No. You know, it's, it's, it's really... It's, re it's such a heartbreaking way to, for someone to, to go. You know, it's, it's really, really difficult. And I just wonder... I know you're doing fine. You look great. You're doing fine physically. You know, got over yeah, this well. COVID. 
Oh, <laughs> tell me about my hair. It, it looks all right. It looks okay, but you want to see underneath in the back here, just as well that you don't see it. But it's it's kind of all right there. Um, but yeah, things like that. But mentally, I mean, I have days. We all have days um, when some days you just feel a little bit more anxious than others, and it's quite hard to deal with. And, and somebody in the middle of either taking care of someone with Alzheimer's in the middle of all of this, it's like multiplied, isn't it? It's like, you know, it's, 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 it's much tougher. Yeah, well, do you know, when I was coping with it all and doing breakfast television, I, I literally had agoraphobia. I did, if people asked me out, I went into a panic and thought, well, how can I say no? What am I going to say? I don't want to lie, but I don't, I don't want to make things up, but I can't go out. And I just think that was the only thing I had left to keep me sort of sane. It was to not go out anywhere and not try and socialise or just sort of keep myself to myself, do my job, look after the children, um, um, Martin, my husband, fended for himself, bless him, he was brilliant. <laughs> He's all right. He's very self-sufficient, is Martin. Um, he, is very, he is very self-sufficient. Now, how are the boys? Because they're not boys anymore, Fiona. They're young men now. How are they doing with all of this oh, lockdown? They, one of them is huge. One of them is about to go in the army, Lorraine. We didn't oh. see that. But uh, he's really sort of got this sort of sense of duty about him. But uh, oh, the coronavirus has postponed that. Right. He, it keeps being put back. His basic training keeps being put back, put back, because obviously they can't take new recruits and then sort of give them all the virus. So, yeah, he's, he's hanging around. He's, he's, it's time he went, Lorraine. It's that time. <laughs> it's that time. It's time, know, to, time to fly the nest. Time to fly the nest. You can always come back. But, yeah, but, I mean, yeah, it, it's... Too often. It's really hard, though, for I think it's really hard for young men, young women that find themselves in that situation and they're not quite sure what to do. And of course, there's yeah. benefits. You know, you get to spend more time with them, but it can be a little bit stressful as well. Of course it can. Yes, especially when I open the fridge after a big shop and there's hardly anything left in there. And it was to feed the family, not just my eldest son. So that's right. quite frequently occurring. Yeah. Argument. There's that. What is that about boys, though? I mean, boys just eat like piglets. I mean, they just never stop. And that's, that's the thing. You've just got to keep keep shopping all the time. But you'll miss them when they're away. That's the thing. I will. <laughs> well, in fact, if it hadn't been for my youngest son, I wouldn't have known how to talk to you this morning, Lorraine, because I'm on, my mobile phone is on a tripod and it's all happened and I don't know how it's happened. So thank it's you. <laughs> that's what we that that's when they come in extremely handy it really is fiona i think the work that you do for that for alzheimer's um society is absolutely brilliant as you said it's an emergency appeal and this is an emergency so anything that we can do to help we really must thank you so much and thank you if you're thinking of donating it really would really, really, I haven't got my proper brain back yet, sorry. It would be so very much appreciated. Of course, Fiona, great to talk to you, my love. You take care of yourself. Lovely yeah, to see you. Too. Lovely to see you. Thank you.